Are you curious about what the life of former glamour model from Mile End, Samantha Fox, is like now? Once an attractive beauty in front of men, it's surprising that she has now turned 57 years old with many changes in her appearance and life. Numerous sources report that Samantha has encountered a series of tragedies and heartbreaking losses, all while being haunted by painful memories that seem to have her in their grip. To know what terrible things Samantha is going through, don't miss this video. Samantha Fox first graced page three of The Sun newspaper 40 years ago, marking the beginning of a highly publicized career. Over these four decades, Sam has experienced a considerable amount of personal challenges and tragedies. Recently, she faced another profound loss with the sudden death of her sister, Vanessa, who passed away following a heart attack at the age of 50. The bond between Sam and Vanessa was notably strong and pivotal in their lives. This closeness was evident in an incident that Sam recounted in her 2017 autobiography, Forever. She shared a harrowing memory from their past, where Vanessa played a crucial role in protecting her. During a violent episode involving their alcoholic father, Pat, Sam feared for her life as he attacked her. In that critical moment, Vanessa intervened by physically jumping on their father's back, a brave act that effectively saved Sam from further harm. Sam's recent loss of Vanessa is a significant emotional blow, especially considering her past experiences with loss. It comes eight years after the death of her long-term partner, Myra Stratton, who succumbed to cancer. Reportedly, Myra Stratton's passing in 2015 at the age of 60 marked a deeply challenging period in Sam Fox's life. Myra was not only Sam's romantic partner, but also her manager, playing a significant role in both her personal and professional life for 16 years. Their relationship was pivotal for Sam, as it was during the year they started dating that she publicly confirmed her sexuality, a significant moment for the model-turned-pop star. The impact of Myra's diagnosis in 2013 and her subsequent passing in 2015 profoundly affected Sam. In a candid admission last month, the former Celebrity Big Brother star opened up about the difficulties she faced in the wake of Mira's death. She confessed to struggling with maintaining a facade of happiness, a challenge that also extended to her creative pursuits. For two years, Sam found herself unable to write new music as her grief heavily influenced her lyrics, casting them in a consistently somber tone. This period was marked by an understandable reluctance to release any new work or to perform on stage, as she did not want to convey her deep sadness to her audience. Sam's reflections on this period reveal the depth of her bond with Myra, whom she referred to as the love of her life. The loss left her doubting whether she would ever find such a connection again. However, Sam also spoke about the healing power of time, a belief that was validated when she met Linda Olson. Describing their connection as instant love, Sam found in Linda a new source of support and strength, akin to the role her mother played in her life. This new relationship culminated in marriage last year, signifying a new chapter of love and companionship for Sam and a testament to her resilience and capacity for renewal amidst life's trials. Sam Fox experienced a deeply personal and distressing health scare last year when doctors discovered a 10 millimeter growth in her throat. The fear and anxiety surrounding this discovery were heightened due to her harrowing experience with cancer through her partner, Myra Stratton, who was diagnosed with cancer in 2013 and battled the disease for two years before passing away. The growth in Sam's throat, which was eventually removed, turned out to be a benign polyp. But the period leading up to this diagnosis was fraught with fear and uncertainty for Sam. In a conversation with The Sun, Sam shared the emotional turmoil she endured during this time. Despite her inherently positive nature, the possibility of facing a life-threatening illness caused her significant distress. 
She admitted to crying extensively and feeling overwhelmed by fear, a response shaped by her previous experience of watching Myra's health deteriorate over two years. Sam recounted how she witnessed Myra's gradual decline, a painful memory that resurfaced vividly while she awaited her own medical results. These memories brought back the harsh realities of cancer, making her current health scare feel all the more immediate and threatening. Sam described how the ordeal felt like reliving the past, with the traumatic memories of Myra's struggle against cancer coming flooding back as if they had happened only yesterday. Amidst this challenging time, Sam found solace and strength in the advice and support of her mother, who herself had successfully battled breast cancer. Her mother's positive outlook and encouragement played a crucial role in helping Sam navigate her fears. She advised Sam not to dwell on the worst-case scenario, sharing her belief in the power of positivity, which she credited for her own recovery. This guidance from her mother provided Sam with a source of comfort and resilience, helping her to cope with the anxiety of her health scare and the painful memories it evoked. Sam Fox's childhood and early career years were overshadowed by the struggles and challenges posed by her father, Patrick Fox. Patrick, who managed Sam's career until 1991, had a tumultuous relationship with his daughter, complicated by his battles with alcohol and cocaine addiction. This addiction not only affected his professional conduct, but also had severe repercussions on his personal behavior, particularly towards Sam. In a revealing interview with The Mirror, Sam recounted a particularly traumatic incident involving her father. The altercation was sparked by a seemingly mundane issue, a car radio. Sam had requested her father to install a radio in her car, a task he had neglected due to his disorganized and inebriated state. Frustrated by his lack of action, Sam turned to her bodyguard, Dave, for assistance. This decision, however, triggered a violent outburst from Patrick. Sam described the harrowing details of the assault, where Patrick went crazy and attacked her. The attack was not just physical, but also verbal, with Patrick hurling insults that compared Sam unfavorably to her mother. During the assault, Sam suffered significant injuries, including two fractured ribs and a black eye. The severity of the attack left her curled up on the floor, attempting to protect herself while enduring the blows. Her description of the event paints a vivid picture of the fear and pain she experienced as she believed her father might actually end her life. His continuous kicks, particularly one that was so forceful it winded her, highlighted the brutality of the attack. Ta Following the violent incident, Sam, in a state of shock and with blood in her hair, made the decision to flee her home. This choice was influenced not just by the immediate trauma, but also by the advice of a neighbor. The neighbor, recognizing the potential implications of the incident, cautioned her against reporting the assault to the police citing concerns that it would ruin her father's reputation. However, the assault left a deep and lasting impact on Sam. When she later returned home to gather her belongings, she encountered a moment of emotional confrontation with her father. Patrick, in a state of remorse, broke down in tears and pleaded for Sam's forgiveness. Despite his emotional plea, Sam, still reeling from the brutality of the attack and the years of tumultuous relationship, refused to forgive him at that time. The strained relationship between Sam and her father took a more formal turn in 1991. Sam took legal action against Patrick, suing him for embezzling a substantial amount of money, $1 million, from her accounts. The court case resulted in a significant judgment in Sam's favor, awarding her a settlement of $363,000. Following this legal battle, their relationship deteriorated further, leading to a situation where they only saw each other once over the next nine years, until Patrick's death. Despite the years of estrangement and the complex, often painful history between them, Sam later reached a point of personal reconciliation regarding her father. She stated that she has forgiven him, 
a sentiment that speaks to her ability to find closure and peace despite the challenging circumstances of their relationship. Throughout her life, Sam Fox has had a series of notable relationships with various men, each bringing different experiences and lessons. Her romantic history is marked by connections with individuals from diverse backgrounds, reflecting the varied chapters of her personal life. One significant relationship was with Australian Peter Foster, known for his involvement in fraudulent activities. Sam's connection with Foster reached a point where he proposed marriage to her. However, Sam declined this proposal. Reflecting on this period and her decision, she provided insight into her state of mind at the time. She acknowledged her vulnerability, influenced by the turmoil of her parents' split. Foster, she described, was clever, manipulative, and domineering. These traits, combined with her own emotional vulnerability, brought her close to marrying him, but she ultimately chose not to. In addition to Foster, Sam was romantically linked to Kit Miller, a journalist. This relationship, like others, added to the tapestry of her personal life, though specific details about their time together are less documented. Another notable figure in her romantic history is Rafi Camino, a Spanish bullfighter. This relationship highlighted Sam's diverse and international romantic connections, bringing a different cultural and lifestyle element into her life. Sam also had a connection with Paul Stanley, the rhythm guitarist and lead vocalist of the American rock band Kiss. This relationship with a prominent figure in the music industry indicates the intersection of her personal and professional worlds. As both were prominent figures in the entertainment industry. Sam Fox comes from a family deeply rooted in the arts and the working-class culture of London's East End. She was the eldest child of John Patrick Fox, a builder by profession, and Carol Ann Wilkin, an actress and former dancer known for her involvement in the 1960s pop music program Ready, Steady, Go. This blend of hard-working market trader family background and a connection to the entertainment industry profoundly influenced her upbringing and early interests. Growing up in Mile End in the East End of London, Sam was immersed in an environment that she later described as a working-class market trader family. This background provided her with a grounded perspective on life, despite the eventual fame and glamour she would encounter. Sam's family included one full sibling, her younger sister Vanessa, with whom she shared a close bond. Tragically, Vanessa passed away in March 2023 at the age of 50, an event that deeply affected Sam. From a very young age, Sam showed a keen interest in the performing arts. She attended the Anna Scher Theater School, starting at the age of five, indicating an early dedication to her craft. Her passion for performance led her to further her education at Mountview Theatre School, another testament to her commitment to the arts. Additionally, she attended St. Thomas More Catholic School in Wood Green, balancing her academic pursuits with her growing interest in entertainment. Sam's inclination towards music and performance manifested early. She formed her first pop band at the age of 14, demonstrating not only her musical talent but also her initiative and drive. This early venture into music was quickly followed by a significant milestone when she signed her first record deal with Lamborghini Records at the age of 15. During the 1980s, Samantha Fox emerged as a renowned model in the UK, captivating the public with her distinctive appearance and charismatic personality. Her blonde hair, natural curves, and approachable, cheeky girl-next-door charm contributed significantly to her becoming one of the most photographed women of that decade. Her appeal extended beyond her physical attributes. It was also the way she presented herself and connected with the audience that cemented her status as an iconic figure of that era. In 1995, Sam Fox made a notable comeback to the world of glamour modeling. She returned to page three of The Sun, marking the 25th anniversary of the feature that had initially propelled her to fame. This return was a significant event, not just for Fox herself, but also for the fans who had followed her career since her debut. Her reappearance on page three was a nod to her roots in the modeling industry 
and a celebration of the feature that had become a staple of British tabloid culture. Fox's impact on the modeling scene continued into the following year. In 1996, she was featured on the front cover of Playboy magazine's October issue, adding another notable achievement to her modeling career. For the cover, she donned the magazine's iconic pink bunny outfit, paired with a colorful guitar. This choice of attire and prop showcased her playful and vibrant persona, blending her modeling image with a touch of musical flair. The Playboy feature was more than just a visual spectacle. It included an extensive eight-page spread that offered a deeper look into Fox's life and thoughts. The spread comprised not only photographs, but also an interview that provided insights more revealing than the photographs themselves. This interview allowed Fox to share her perspectives and experiences, giving readers a glimpse into her personal journey and the person behind the public persona. Throughout her career, Samantha Fox has been celebrated for her ability to blend a strong visual appeal with a relatable and engaging personality. Her appearances in both The Sun and Playboy, along with numerous other modeling engagements, solidified her status as a prominent figure in the modeling world. Her influence extended beyond the pages of magazines, leaving a lasting impression on the culture of glamour modeling and the representation of femininity in the media during the 1980s and beyond. Samantha Fox's career extended well beyond her success as a model and pinup girl. She also achieved considerable fame as a singer, particularly in the United States. Her foray into the music industry saw her delivering a series of suggestive and spirited dance pop hits that resonated with audiences both in the U.S. and internationally. Among her most notable songs were Naughty Girls Need Love Too, Touch Me, I Want Your Body, and I Wanna Have Some Fun. These tracks, known for their catchy melodies and bold lyrics, became top 10 hits in the U.S., showcasing Fox's ability to captivate audiences not just visually, but also through her music. The success of these singles was mirrored in the performance of her albums, with all three of her parent albums charting on the Billboard 200. This achievement highlighted her versatility and appeal as an artist, transcending her modeling background. Despite a brief hiatus from the U.S. chart since 1989, Fox's musical career continued to evolve. She showcased her diverse range in music with the release of her fourth studio album, Just One Night, in 1991. This album featured the lead single, Hurt Me, Hurt Me, But the Pants Stay On, a song that continued her trend of producing bold and catchy pop music. Catchy in 1998, Fox released 21st Century Fox, an album that leaned heavily into the Eurodance genre. This project was notable for its contemporary sound and included a cover of the lounge pop classic, Perhaps, Perhaps, Perhaps. The inclusion of this song demonstrated Fox's willingness to explore different musical styles and eras, further highlighting her versatility as a musician. In 2005, Samantha Fox showcased a different aspect of her musical talent with the release of Angel with an Attitude, an album that embraced a rockier style. This marked a notable shift from her previous dance pop sounds, demonstrating her ability to adapt and explore various musical genres. The album's title itself hinted at a more edgy and bold approach, in line with Fox's persona as a strong and assertive artist. Beyond her studio albums, Fox's musical repertoire includes a wide array of hits collections, remix albums, and cover versions of popular songs. Her choice to cover tracks like Donna Summer's Hot Stuff and Madonna's La Isla Bonita reflects her appreciation for and ability to reinterpret the work of other iconic artists in her unique style. These covers allowed her to pay homage to these artists while also showcasing her versatility. One of the highlights of her music career has been her collaborations with other artists. A notable example is Call Me, a duet with Sabrina, another European modal singer from the 1980s. This collaboration was a meeting of two iconic figures from the same era, both known for their modaling and music careers, and it added a fascinating dynamic to Fox's discography. When Fox, 
Initially transitioned from modeling to singing, she encountered skepticism and criticism from some quarters of the music industry. Doubts about her ability to succeed as a singer were prevalent, given her background as a model. However, she quickly silenced these doubts, proving her critics wrong by finding her unique sound and establishing herself as a successful singer. In recent years, Samantha Fox has experienced a resurgence in popularity, particularly among younger audiences. This new wave of fans has discovered and developed an appreciation for her music, drawn to its anthemic choruses and compelling storytelling. Her ability to connect with a new generation of listeners speaks to the timeless appeal of her music and her enduring talent as a performer. In addition to her thriving careers in modeling and music, Samantha Fox has ventured into the world of acting, showcasing her versatility as an entertainer. Her journey in acting began early as she attended drama school from a young age, honing her skills in preparation for the opportunities that would come her way. One of her earliest acting roles came in 1987 when she took on the character Charlene in the action comedy Three Kinds of Heat. This marked her entry into the world of film, demonstrating her ability to transition from the world of modeling and music to that of acting. While this role was significant, it was just the beginning of her acting journey. In 1990, Samantha Fox made a guest appearance in the final season of the spin-off sitcom Charles in Charge. Her presence in this popular sitcom was a testament to her growing reputation as an entertainer with crossover appeal. However, her acting career followed a sporadic trajectory, with several years passing between her roles. In 1999, she took on her second speaking role in the British comedy film The Match, where she portrayed the character Patsy. This marked a return to acting after a significant hiatus, showcasing her ability to immerse herself in diverse roles. One of her more recent acting roles came in 2015 when she played the character Karen in the horror movie Seven Cases. This film allowed her to explore the genre of horror, further diversifying her acting portfolio. Samantha Fox's passion for acting was reignited after her performance in the 2015 horror movie Seven Cases. This experience seemed to rekindle her love for the craft, leading her to explore more acting opportunities in different genres. One of her notable acting credits is her role as Ms. Moore in the fifth installment of the popular Sharknado franchise. This comedic and often campy series allowed Fox to embrace her sense of humor and engage with a unique and entertaining storyline. In addition to Sharknado, she signed up to appear in A Night in Red Trilogy, a miniseries based on the infamous Jack the Ripper murders. This project delves into the mystery and intrigue surrounding one of history's most enigmatic criminals, offering Fox the opportunity to engage with a complex and historically significant narrative. However, one of Samantha Fox's most remarkable and culturally significant acting achievements occurred in 1995 when she appeared in the Hindi movie Rock Dancer. For this film, she flew from London to Mumbai to film a single scene in which she sang and danced to a track named Traffic Jam. This brief yet memorable appearance made her the first Western woman to ever appear in a Bollywood film. The significance of this accomplishment cannot be overstated, as it highlighted her willingness to embrace diverse cultures and explore new horizons within the world of entertainment. Fox expressed her pride and amazement at this unique experience on social media, underscoring the importance of her participation in a Bollywood production. What do you think about Samantha Fox's life and the tragedies she had to go through? Leave us your comments in the section below. We hope you have found this helpful video. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.